Hi friends, welcome to the class of Formal Language and Automata Theory. In the previous lectures, we have seen the concepts of finite automata. That is the one of the machine if you see in Chomsky hierarchy. That is what is finite automata, what are the types of finite automata and of course minimizations, conversions, epsilon NFA and also equivalence. Everything we have seen with respect to the finite automata. This is a very less powerful machine compared with the remaining machines. So all these four are machines and we can say that finite automata is less powerful compared to these three machines. Here why we are calling it as less powerful. Anyway, I'll explain that one also. Now we are going to the push down automata. So why we need to go for push down automata? We'll see now. Before going into the concept of push down automata, first I'll explain how this sort of the automata is required. Even we have finite automata now. So this is somewhat more powerful compared to finite automata. So we'll see that. Let us suppose if I give like the language is a power n where n is greater than or equals to 1. So can you construct a finite automata for this? Then your answer is of course yes. Why? Because you can simply take like here one straight and you can of course n is greater than or equals to 1. No, at least 1 a should be accepted. Then I'll go for q1. q1 will be final state and you'll write here a like this. So this will accept any number of a's that is where n is greater than or equals to 1. If I put n is greater than or equals 0 then you can put directly here also self loop and you can make this as final state. Now the next question is what is the finite automata for a power n b power m where n comma m both are greater than or equals to 0. Now you can observe here a is to the power of n b is to the power of m that means there is no exact that is a relation between how many number of n's and how many number of m m's to come in one string. So there is no relation. So n can be any number, m can be also any number but both are positive. Like you can have the language like this a, b also, a also because I am taking n as 1, m as 0. You can take and only simple b I can take where n is equal to 0 or else I'll take a b b or else I'll take a a b like this I can take any number. Now if I ask you can you construct the finite automata for this? Yes you can construct like you can take a q naught here. So zero number of s zero number of s of course if both are zero this is epsilon that's why this is initial state itself is the final state. Then what you need to consider accepting for single a yes it can accept any number of s that's why I'll put self loop here. Then after that b's how many number of b's it has to consider. So if it is 1b it has to accept even if it is for 2b's also any number of b's. But you may think that why can't you write this self loop here. That means you can observe here number of a should be followed by b. That means whenever you get b you should not get any here so that's why I have taken a single b here so this is a final state here you can so it can accept any number of that means a, a that is a language a power n b power m where n, n, n comma m greater than or equals to 0 even if you give single b also it is accepting single a is also it is accepting so like this you can construct now my question is can you construct finite automata for a power n b power n where n is greater than or equals to 1. So now the thing is of course I am writing the language here the thing is n should be equal for both a and b that means how many number of a's you are taking that must be equal to number of b's. So the language will be like this a b a a b b triple a triple b so like this you need to consider so now my question is is it possible to construct finite automata so let us suppose if you want to try like this you can answer like this but you can observe here here there is no comparison that how many number of years you are getting 
with respect to bees so there is no comparison you are blindly taking of course if i write self loop means how many times this self loop will be repeated for a particular string means you cannot exactly say it depends on one string to the another string so for a particular string you can say but you cannot say for any any string that is how many number of times this will be repeated so this answer might not be correct for this language so here you need to compare so these comparisons are you getting in finite automata definitely the answer is no so in finite automata there is no constraint like we whether if you if you have two symbols we are not counting how many number of symbols you are receiving there so you are not counting here so that's why you cannot construct the finite automata for this sort of the problem so you require a powerful machine compared with your finite automata so that's why we are going for the next powerful machine that is push down automata so you can see here finite automata which is a less powerful and next powerful pda that is push down next powerful machine linear bounded automata next powerful is turing machine so like this you can cancel always in circle is less powerful compared to the out circle you can observe from this so now you can observe some more problems like i'll write here for this finite automata the language will be like a power n where n is greater than or equals to 1 for full stone automata that is a power n b power n you can solve the problems like this whereas for linear bounded automata you can go for a power n b power n and c power n also this sort of the problems you can solve whereas for turing machines let us suppose a power n where n is a prime number that means there is no order and uh, here we re have some other constants anyway i'll explain when it comes to turing machines concept so like this we have different different machines so now we are going for this push down automata and now we'll see how we can solve this problem of course uh, from our constraint we can conclude that if there is a property that if we count num how many number of years we are taking and if we match with the same number with b i can able to answer this one so that's why we require a, another machine which is powerful compared to finite automata so now we'll see what is this more power powerness that comes to pow push down automata compared with finite automata so push down automata is a type of automata that employs a stack now you can observe here so here you are getting the additional power by using a stack here in finite automata you are not using any stack whereas in push down automata you are using a stack so it's a way to implement a context free grammar in a similar way we design dfa for regular grammar so you can observe here like for finite automata you are getting regular grammar that means you can see for respective language what is a respective machine as well as respective grammar so for for finite automata the respective grammar is regular whereas for push down automata the respective is context free grammar so that is only here is explaining that is it's a way to implement context free grammar in a similar way we designed dfa for regular grammar so it can remember a finite amount of information but push down automata can remember an infinite so in dfa it can only remember so whereas push down automata how it can remember infinite means we are going for a stack concept so that's why we can say that it can remember for infinite amount of information so that's why we call it as push down automata means finite automata plus that is finite state machine plus a stack so commonly we call this as push down automata so this is a model of push down automata if you can see here the input tape whatever the input string you have given when here it will be taken through the finite control unit and by using your stack you can uh, you can get the answer that whether the given string is accepted or rejected now if you compare with finite automata model you won't have this part and you have only this part like you will have string and that can be taken one by one it goes to the one state to the another state if it goes to the final state you can say that whether it is accepting or rejecting but whereas here you will have a stack based on the stack you will take the states with respect to the input let us suppose if i give input as a power n b power n where if i take n is equals to 3 
so the input will be like a a a then b b b like this it will be and one by one input will be taken with re with respect to state as well as with respect to top of the stack we know that top stack means which is you can insert the elements one by one so that is whichever the last element you inserted that can be taken first and that is whenever you are taking you call it as push operation whenever you are moving removing out that is you call it as pop operation that is also we called as last in first out concept so the next tuple notation so in finite automata we have five tuples whereas in push down automata you have seven tuple notation so what are those seven tuples you can see here so q sigma tau do q naught z naught and f if you compare with finite automata you will find finite automata all five symbols but here additionally two more symbols why because you have stack so what are those five symbols in, in finite automata that means q sigma do q naught f so these are all we know that they are also belongs to finite automata so q is the finite number of states sigma is the input alphabet and then we'll take this one well, do is nothing but it's a transition function of course it is different compared to the finite automata anyway q naught is the same like initial state and f is the final state but here you can observe two new tuples that is tau and z naught which are with respect to the stack so anyway we are including here stack now so that's why here the five tuples which is with respect to finite automata and two tuples which with respect to stack that's why here we said like finite state machine plus stack combinedly we called as push down automata so now you can see here what is tau it's a set of stack symbols anyway we are maintaining stack what are the symbols you want to insert into the stack that can be given by tau and z naught in the sense we require top symbol of the stack anyway if, if you want to insert or if you want to remove we are with respect to the top of the stack so that's why what is the top of the stack that can be basically that is a z naught is the initial stack top symbol that will be used now so there are two types of push down automata in finite automata also there are two types like deterministic finite automata and non deterministic finite automata here also you will have deterministic push down automata and non deterministic push down automata and well I'll, I'll explain the problems with respect to deterministic as well as non deterministic push down automata and what is the difference between tuple notation with respect to deterministic and non deterministic everything is same but this will be changed the do transition function will be changed with respect to non deterministic finite automata whereas in deterministic finite automata for every state there exists exactly one input but here you in non deterministic you can have any number of output states that's why here instead of q you have to put here as 2 power q if you put 2 power q it will become non deterministic push down automata say so non deterministic set of states you will go there that's why it is called as non deterministic push down automata so that is only the difference everything is same that is a tuple notation is same for deterministic and non deterministic and also now my question is acceptance so in finite automata we can say that whenever you are tracing a string with respect to your finite automata if it goes to the final state we can say that it is accepting but whereas for push down automata not only final state if your stack is empty after taking the entire string then also we can say that acceptance then also we can say that the string is accepted even if it is not going to the final state if it if the stack is empty then also we can say that it is the given string is accepted by the push down automata so there are two acceptance options whereas in finite automata only one option that is only going to the final state anyway there exists no stack in your finite automata so in order to make you understand better i'm explaining this push down automata comparing with the finite automata so like this we have tuple notation as well as types of push down automata and acceptance
we'll see the problems with respect to the pushdown automata in the next video lecture thank you